A few years ago, I spat into a test tube like this, <laughs> closed it up, and sent it off for analysis. And a few weeks later, I got back the results. And those results said that my ancestors came from Western Asia, this part of the world right here. Now, if you travel around the world, you will see people with different noses and different colored skin and different hair, and they have different gods. And you may ask yourself, how many different types of people are there in the world? Isn't humanity wonderful? We're all human beings, but we're obviously different from each other. And so we can ask the question, from a, as a scientist, how many subspecies of humans are there? Now, a little background. Here's a Homo sapien. I'm a Homo sapien. We are Homo, genus Homo, and sapien is a species. So, to be more objective about this, we should look at how we biologists classify other, our closest relatives. So, for example, uh, these are chimpanzees. On the left, we have Pan troglodytes. Pan is the genus, troglodytes is a species. It's also known as the common chimp. On the right, we have Pan paniscus, a lesser known bonobo. And they uh, diverged from each other about two million years. So that's what two million years of independent um, evolution will do. So let's have a little bit more careful look at their differences. So here on the left is the common chimp, on the right is Pan paniscus. You can see there's subtle differences about the nose and the lips and the ears and the forehead. I think the brow ridge on the common chimp is bigger, for example. Now here's another one. On the left is common chimp, on the right is paniscus. Um, sometimes called, Pan is sometimes called uh, the robust chimpanzee, and here's the gracile chimpanzee on the right. So where do they live? They live in Africa, and the common chimps here are in the four colors on top are the common chimps, and in red is the bonobos. And the bonobos and the common chimps are separated by the Congo River in black there. And so you can tell that since they were divided by a river that they probably can't swim very well. Now there are also two subspecies of, of common chimp in the purple and the blue that are separated by the Ubangi River. And there again, a river has separated these two species and isolated them to some degree. And then there's another Sanaga River up here in the Cameroons dividing two species, subspecies. So if you look on the left, you'll see the, the genus is Pan. The species is either Troglodytes or Paniscus. And you'll see that there are four subspecies of common chimps, the Verus veloroso, the Troglodytes, and the Swineforthy. So four subspecies of chimpanzee. Now, if you look at those four subspecies, these are, if you have to look very carefully to tell the differences, but you can see that there's some differences. Look at the Velar, Velaroso, for example, in the Nigeria Cameroon chimpanzee. They look slightly different. Even, even a human being can tell the difference. I'm sure these chimps can tell the difference. What about orangutans? Pongo is the genus. Up until recently, there were two species of, uh, of orangutans, Pongo pygmaeus from Borneo on the left, and Pongo abeli from Sumatra on the right. And uh, you can see the Pongo pygmaeus from Borneo. There are one, two, three subspecies, worm bee, pygmaeus, and morio. And uh, Bailey doesn't have any subspecies, but they're smaller groups. But recently, a new orangutan species has been detected. On the map on the left, it's in yellow in the, near Lake Toba. And here's what it looks like, and it's called Pongo tampanuliensis, also in Sumatra. But it's different from the Sumatran, uh, the Pongo abeli orangutan. So let's have a look at what they look like. Look at the Borneo one on the left. See how beautifully rough the skin is and how deep orange the beard is. And it's, and it's so, and compared to the Sumatran one who doesn't have as rough a fringe around his face. And the Tampanuli eyeballs look, I'm not sure how they're different. Anyway, they look different and they can tell each other apart. And so when we look at this phylogenetic tree of, of apes, of the great apes, on the right, there are orangutans, Borneo and Sumatra, and we have to add a new species, Tampanuli orangutans, to it. But we want to know about humans, modern humans. They're over here, and we want to know about those different branches. How are we going to establish these different branches? Well, we should know. We can use genes to do that, and humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, and interestingly, all of the other great apes have 24 pairs of chromosomes. 
So here are those 23 pairs of chromosomes that we have. And then we also have mitochondrial DNA. And right in the, up, the upper part labeled, labeled D-loop, or D-loop, are as a hypervariable region. And that hypervariable region can be used to create a tree. And there it is on the upper left, the, the hypervariable D-loop. And what those mitochondria look like, that, that's the circular genome in the upper left, but the mitochondria themselves are organelles inside every cell in your body, and they, they're labeled there. And it's kind of the same size as what's called a Wolbachia. And I show you these Wolbachia and the mitochondria together because they both are alpha proteobacteria, or the mitochondria came from an alpha proteobacteria ancestor, and they became part of us about two billion years ago, and they help us breathe oxygen. And uh, this mitochondria still has, partially, its own genome. So what we can do is look at these genomes of mitochondria in all different human beings and then classify them according to make a phylogenetic tree. Just as some phylogenetic history on the lower left, you see about two billion years ago, the uh, bacteria, alpha protobacteria, as the red arrow, went into eukaryotes and you will find these alpha proteobacteria in animals and fungi and plants today. So one other detail is that the mitochondria you have in your body, you inherited from your mother, and your mother got it from her mother, and her mother got it from her mother, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're a male, you have a Y chromosome, and you got that from your father, and your father got it from his father, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when you look at mitochondrial DNA, you're looking along this green line into the past. You're not looking at any other ancestors, but just along the maternal line. If you look at the Y chromosome, you're just looking at the paternal line. So, so here's the tree. It's a gigantic, complicated tree that can be created by sampling the mitochondrial DNA of all humanity. And there are hundreds and thousands of groupings here. But we want to simplify it. And when you do, it simplifies to this. In pink here are the ones that are in Africa. And in blue are the ones of human beings who have come out of Africa. So you can see that our origins are in Africa. Now you can use this tree to create a, a mitochondrial DNA migration map of the world. And you can see in Africa, on the left, you have L0, L1, L2, L3. These are the, the earliest, deepest um, mitochondrial groups. And uh, you can see that L3 in East Africa divides into N and M. And then human beings left Africa about 80,000 years ago or so, and then spread out all over the world. And the reason why when human beings spread out and they got different is because this is how we used to get around. We, there were no airplanes, no boats, no rocket ships, no cars. And so any time we went somewhere, we'd had to walk. And so that walking, you'd, you'd walk on either side of a mountain and that would split one group into two groups and they'd be uh, geographically and also sexually isolated from each other. So let's look at this mitochondrial tree again, but in, not in as much detail as before. And you can see that in this phylogenetic tree, you can see the timeline is 200,000 years. Today is zero at the bottom. And you can see all of Africans are in green. This is a green background here. San are in purple there on the left. And then the non-san and then the blue, the M and Ns, are the ones that came out of Africa. Now, and just so you know who the San are, there are people who still live in South America and South Africa and Namibia there. And here's a map of the different types of San. So back to this diagram. We want to ask the question, can this diagram cure racism? And how might, this, how might you do that? Well, if you want to divide people into two groups, you draw a horizontal line on this phylogenetic tree, and then you have two groups, the L0 group and the L1 through 6 group. So there are two subspecies. But if you say, wait a minute, let's make three groups. Well, then you cut your line here, and you have three groups there. If you want to draw, if you want to have more, four, great groups of people, then you cut this phylogenetic tree there. If you want nine, here's where you cut it. And now, here's another th a view of the same thing, and it's a little bit more detailed because I want to cut it, well, there's Africa, there's out of Africa, and you cut it here for two groups, cut it here for three groups, here for four, here for ten, and when you cut it here, when you cut this diagram vertically, and you cre essentially create 20 groups. 19 of those groups are African, and one is African and non-African. Um, and so uh, maybe this diagram can cure racism.
So how many subspecies of humans are there? Back to the original question. Well, here's another tree that's also based on the, the, the uh, mitochondria, but here they've divided it into the Eurasians on the left and the East Africans, the West Africans, the Central Africans, the, and then there are two Southern Africans. So if you want to divide it into one, two, three, four, five, six groups, then those are the six groups and those are what the people who are in these six groups look like. And it's not much like the traditional racist groupings that people have been put into. And so this is the scientific version of putting people into subspecies. And uh, why this is important is because, well, here's a report about soccer hooliganism and reported instances of discrimination in, foot, in football or soccer. And you can see that on the lower chart that race is by far the most common form of abuse. Uh, and discrimination. So it's something that we need to overcome as a species. And so when we ask how many subspecies of humans are there, well the answer is as many as you want. But if you want less than 20, then 19 are African and the other is a combination of East African and everyone else. So we're all Africans. I think this scientific result can help alleviate racism. But in the next video, Yaka disagrees. He thinks that I'm being naive. He thinks that racist groups will always try to show that their genes are better than everyone else's. So it's probably best if we don't look too carefully at the genetic differences between peoples. But I disagree. I, I think he, he's just being an ostrich. <laughs>